All right, y'all, we're back for episode four. We're going to get right into it. So today's episode is titled The Ruthless Pursuit of Blood with All a Child's Demanding. El yeah loves titles. El yeah, what are your thoughts about this title? So, right out, ruthless, okay? Ruthless, and then pursuit. So I'm looking after something, but I don't care what it costs me. I'm pursuing it anyway. Like, this is just my just natural instinct. This is what I want, and this is what I need. More importantly, this is what I need. So, mm-hmm. a child, I don't care if the there's a blizzard outside. I don't care what's going on. This is what I need to survive. So, at the end of episode three, we see that um, Louis is saving someone. We hear him mention her name. But they don't go any further than that until episode four, which we are covering now. They have made a new vampire. So a ruthless pursuit. We know that killing is wrong, but it doesn't matter. This is what I need to survive. And I'm going to just go ahead and put a pin in me right there. <laughs> All right. So that's good. So that gets us right into the making of Claudia. So at, at the beginning of the episode, we see basically Louis is is racing home. He's trying to get Claudia to Lestat, um, knowing that he can't make uh, a vampire because he's in a weakened state. Um, so he begs Lestat and Lestat just kind of looks at him. Um, and there's a lot of different emotions going on on his face. D- uh, do we all recall that particular? moment he so for me this is when he shows he genuinely loves louis as messed up as this whole dynamic is he loves louis because he could have just outright let claudia die a a human death not made her a vampire but because this is something that louis desires he really wants this girl to live like this is where we see okay at face value lestat really loves Louis. He loves him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he'd do anything for him. He loved it's him. Like, he loved, he him, loved him so him. much. He'd do anything for Louis. Was, and he's he like, if him. I need to do this for you, I'm going to do it. And it's a, I think it's a damaged guy, love, though. <clears throat> it is a damaged love. It's that toxic love. But he's like, I, he's looking in his eyes and he's just like, this is what you want? This, you know you know, daddy can get it for you. Alright, <laughs> let me go on and get that for you. you want- hey, daddy. Yeah. Look, at daddy. Yeah. Look at daddy. Look at daddy. My daddy gonna give it to me. My daddy gonna give it to me. <laughs> and daddy my gave it to my French wide daddy. French wide daddy. <laughs> gave him a baby because that's what he wanted. Say that again, Morris. <laughs> my French wide <laughs> you you want a you want a daughter? Okay, no problem. I'm gonna get you. Okay, yeah, daddy gonna bring you to <laughs> like <Santa Claus. laughs> And Come speaking, down of, <laughs> speaking of Claudia, so they make Claudia. So Claudia is at the tender age of fourteen, y'all. So imagine mm-hmm. a vampire being made at the age of fourteen. Um, a lot of things are happening naturally Horrible. in a human's life at 14. Um, But all of a sudden, now this is a vampire. Um, And so she has this insatiable lust for blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eric, oh, Eric is not with us. Corey. Yes. Claudia's lust for blood. What did we see? What What were your thoughts? So I, I kind of think that Claudia's lust for blood, and I believe the reason why it is so intense is because um, she is so young. And I kind of equated it to puberty and and lust and hormones and all those things combined together. And I think it's their attempt to kind of show her naivete, but also her her youth is that she's she's vibrant. She's you know, she's she's just coming into that point in a woman's life when, you know, certain things start to change. And I think she's right at that critical time. And so for her to be turned then, um, I think it, it, it only heightens, Mm. it only heightens that, um, she's a great character. (laughs) So, so, so Brittany, when we see Claudia, we see Claudia writing in her, in her not journal but uh her diary she's you know she's like yeah. a little kid da, 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 da. and then all of a sudden she we talks see... good and everything yeah yeah so so 
walk us through um, what's happening in your mind as it relates to Claudia. So as it relates to Claudia, what I see happening is that she's now opened her eyes up to this whole new world. And she's like a little kid that's never experienced anything before. Because mm -hmm. for her, I think it was Storyville where she lived at, mm -hmm. where is what got burnt up. And so yeah. she was just like this whole new world with these two men. And she's like, okay, her diary now is her best friend. There aren't any other children around. It's just her. So the only thing that she has to talk to is her diary. She can't really talk to them the way she would talk to one of her little friends. So her diary now becomes her most intimate partner throughout this journey. And so what you're seeing is every single little waking moment, she's writing it down. She's talking it out. She's going through this journey along with her diary. So that's the part mm -hmm. that I saw that I thought was deep because we mm -hmm. finally see from a more naive way of thinking mm -hmm. what Louis and Lestat's relationship is along with what it really means to actually kill. Because at first she's questioning killing, but when Lestat makes the association with Sir, he said something. Y'all remember what he said about Sir? Um the, the sweet syrup or the nectar or something along those lines. He yeah. referred to it, something along those lines. Yeah. It wasn't even a second thought for her. She jumped out the car and was like, I'm going to eat that white man. And she lured him too. She, she lured him with a little humming. I was like, look at her. She's an angry right. predator. She and was it's, already it's, ready. It's, it's a family dynamic though because Louis is like, she, maybe she takes after me. You know, mm -hmm. she would not really want to kill. You know, that's no. not really her thing. And Lestat's like, oh, okay. Fooling with her. <laughs> well, little do you know, she takes after daddy. And she she takes after daddy. Me. I'm a vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian. I, I, I <laughs> eat some meat. I, I eat like meat, meat, please. Thank I you. I eat like meat. I don't want no vegetables. I want meat now. <laughs> no vegetables for me. I Ain't no, no vegetables, vegetables around not, here. <laughs> I eat the meat. Too good. Like, listen, you listen, we ain't all vegetarians. We ain't all good like that. Look, no rat tails for you, huh, Erica? No rat tails. No. Okay. She's like, I don't. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, so after this point, um, so we see Cla Claudia has a lot of questions, and you know, and that, and that tracks, right? Kids She's have gross. a lot of questions, um, and she wants to know a lot about, you know, who she is, where she comes from. She wants to know about Lestat. Who made you, right? And I remember, I don't know if it was episode, I think it was episode two, where Louis was asking a lot of the same questions. Mm. Um, how, by not having this information, how do you think this, how do you think this child processes this information? I think he, it impacted her differently than Louie because she's a girl. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. Girl, don't play that shit. She a different mm -hmm. kind of fledgling. And, and, she <laughs> black, and she a black girl. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Lestat, who made you? <laughs> oh, hey. That nigga ain't asking none of my questions. It's a whole problem. It's gonna be a problem. It was. He talked about something else. That's all I'm saying. Like, That's a good but, point. But, That's a good point. But a juicy. Hi, Bert. I'm gonna I'm, let you put this energy somewhere else. You didn't answer my question. That's a problem. But a juicy part no. is that she and Louis can communicate. You know. And like that, that can't hear the thoughts. Yeah, that telepathy, you know, that's a whole other layer to this whole family dynamic. And in this in this episode, you begin to see her kind of school Louie in 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 certain things. And, and not so much <laughs> in this initial episode, but but in later on, you do see it a little bit in this episode. But she begins to kind of give him even though he's supposed to, he should know. I mean, he's from the same, the same area, the same part of the streets. He's older. He should be wiser. But it, but, but with Claudia and being a female and that intuition, she, she lists, she listened to Lestat, but you can tell towards the end of the, this episode where she starts to distrust him. And that only grows as the show progresses. 
But yeah. but to be fair, she's young, she's inexperienced, she right. hasn't experienced that whole sexual relationship, and you know how yeah. sex jakes things. First of all, mm-hmm. Louis has a French wife. Claudia don't have that. <laughs> wait, you know, wait, wait, wait. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. And her question is, where is her? Hold on a second, hold on a second. Before where her bae? Where her bae? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before, before we get into that, before we get into that, we kind of jumped. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next thing that we see in this particular episode is we see uh, Daniel Malloy. Um, he uh, basically has a, a conversation with Rashid, um, and Rashid. and as Ooh, a result, Rashid. Daniel, the uh, I want to say newscaster, not newscaster, but the reporter, um, he has some questions that he writes down, and basically he wants to know who is Rashid, y'all. Let me say so. I, I'm I'm not gonna spill any beans. I'm not, you know, no spoilers here. But all all the information was there, and I just didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know either. I have an idea of who he is, but I'll wait to I see him when I, I start watching. Wait, yeah. wait. You have you you know. I haven't watched you. episode seven. That's why I've been telling y'all not to spoil it for me. I ain't seen it yet. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> Episode seven has me so involved now. <laughs> I was involved from the beginning. Let <laughs> you know like, who Rashid is. Now I'm like invested. I'm like, where are we going with this? Mm-mm. It was the sex That's scene a- that had me. I was about to say, when they love, when they love the <laughs> night, you a hot toddy. Wait a minute. <laughs> Arms so this, up. You hot so, this is, so this is how love like it's supposed to be? God damn it, I've been cheated. <laughs> I was a mess. That levitating <laughs> sex scene was it for me. <laughs> it was like they were just flying, just flying, just flying, just moving to the beat of the music. <laughs> we don't need no music. We making our own music, goddamn. Okay. They ain't need no need a baker. They had their own thing going. I don't know what it was, but I was like, like Brittany, like Brittany, like like Brittany said, in the past, "Hey, if Lisette <laughs> said that I can call, I'll call. If only if he says it's okay." <laughs> but otherwise, I ain't going home. It's not happening. Like I'm not going home. People be going home. home. <laughs> Daddy said this is my home now, <laughs> and I have to stay people here. People be feeling like they levitate. Well, what'd you say, Erica? People be feeling like they levitate. That's what it is. No, I like, didn't feel that. Oh. No, <laughs> actual <laughs> levitation. <laughs> but look, if I did, oh Lord Jesus, which one? <laughs> <laughs> which is another question. Have you ever, kind of off topic, but yet still, Jermaine, have you ever, you know, just had the bomb sex and you were just like in love, just mm-hmm. in love? Like a soul tie. Like you ain't know where you woke up and was like, where am I at? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I'll, you know, just confused. You're in a state of confusion. Like, what is this? This is like. What is going on? Right now, friend. Who am I? Oh. Where am I? Where am I oh. close? It don't, it, it don't even matter. It don't matter. What's I'm here. What time is it? What it don't matter. Time, time is a social construct, okay? It don't Where matter. am I? <laughs> Please keep on that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Anyway. Listen. <laughs> Because Lestat said it's Sunday, even though y'all think it's Wednesday. It don't matter. Like, Listen, Stan said you don't got to go to work. <laughs> at all. At all. Stay here with me. I'm all not, day. I, here's your W-2. You are now working for me. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would be following Lestat wherever he went. <laughs> if, it was 19, if it was 19, anything. Lestat okay. Would, what? Much, 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 much like the color purple. Okay, let's start is honey, and I'm a bee. Okay. <laughs> That's the tagline. <laughs> let's start be honey, and I'm a bee. <laughs> you want me to do what? Okay, come on, let's go. I love you. No problem. 
No problem. Or even worse, okay. or even worse, uh, calling home. Hey, this, hey, baby, this is dad. I ain't never coming home no more. I ain't never <laughs> coming home no more. <laughs> basically, what Louis did. Hey, honey, and speaking honey, of, speaking that's basically of, what he did. Yes. Speaking of, his mom died. Yes. Oh, wow. yeah. And so much changes. My mom. Here, here, here you here you go. You always find a way. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These transitions that be jagged. But it keeps <laughs> us on fire. Oh. So so Louis gets the call that his mother passed away. And of course he takes his family with him to the, the funeral. I don't know if it was a wake or a funeral. Reminded me of a wake. Um, the wake. Old time. It was a wake. It was a wake. Yeah, I think it was a wake. Um, so he goes, and of course, um, his sister is like, "Who are you?" <laughs> Dad, <laughs> the shade. You went ahead and blew up that time I saw you. Ooh, <laughs> she said, "You and your white daddy." <laughs> yeah. Ooh. His sister, his sister, be doing. Because that is that. I'm gonna tell you now. That's the creator. <laughs> That's everything. Mm, mm. Brittany, what went through your mind when you when you saw that particular scene? <laughs> I'm thinking this is awkward as hell for a week. That you too. Know? That it's too. Layered. It's layered because you have this homosexual couple. That mm -hmm. has this this this, wall, this war, right? Mm -hmm. Which you and, know they really can't live like that out loud. So right, you and then, right. and then when Claudia was just staring over the over the casket, <laughs> not in a this way. is she unconcerned. Have, this is yes. unconcerned. And she was just oh, like, like, oh, like she was at the zoo. She was yeah, like, like look at these like, animals. This was the wasn't she like, though? Wasn't this wasn't she though? Like? Like it was what? the most inappropriate no. thing I've ever seen in terms <laughs> of a way. Like I've, I was like, how which did they all the family saw, by the way, which they all saw, which added to that. And then they didn't even to... know who she was. Correct, correct. The I'm question. Why did they my dad introduce it? And they're like, and then here come the sister. Are y'all the two that should be taking care of her? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I was like, oh, that's shady. Oh, that's so shady. That was very shady. So that comment, that kind of, so the, the night that I told my mom about myself, um, when I was walking out the door, she was just like, uh, you can do whatever you want to do. Just don't adopt a child. And it was like. <laughs> what? I was what? like, what the hell? What, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, what do you think I'm going to do to the child? <laughs> what are you right? Like. I don't know what <clears throat> that brought. No, up I, I totally understand that. I totally understand. I, I, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It just, it just, it just reminded me of some things, and I, you know, I really don't want to talk about that. But it, like, mm -hmm. it, that is something that seems real. But that's mm -hmm. the mindset because of what has been, you know, given to people. Like you're perverted. You're something's wrong with you. You know all these things so oh my goodness god forbid you raise a child oh no they're gonna be twisted and fucked up too when in reality we're all a little mad so right. because i'm homosexual does not mean that i am a pervert like that's not mm -hmm. the same thing erica if you were regular and your other person was a regular and you made and irregular. Are you really regular? <laughs> she went to biology with us. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about uh, what is that? Uh, if something's wrong with me, it's something wrong with your ass. <laughs> if I fucked up, you fucked up. Now, look, so ain't nothing wrong with me, ain't nothing wrong with your ass. End of story. Got me fucked up. Ain't nothing we wrong all, right. we, we're all made. Wrong with nobody. But I will also say too. I think that when it gets to the, the end of this, kind of sort of towards the end of this, I think it's this episode when you actually see the grave and it has the family history 
and Louis's name is included. Um, mm. And Ooh. you, to me, this was such. I felt like this was such a sharp turn. It's not this episode. Oh well, crap! Shucks. Okay, that's that's I that's what it. Oops. Oops. Mm-hmm. That's okay, but that was deep though. Where Corey was yeah, going, like that, that was, was a deep point. I, like you uh, I, might as well be I dead cried. to me. Like correct. I cried. I thought that was sad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So Lestat takes Claudia to Lover's Lane. Um, and at Lover's Lane, basically the in that particular moment, I was just like, wait, hold up, wait a minute. Is he grooming her? Mm. Yup. Mm. 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 He's like, you're going to do elaborate, ex- wait, extravagant kills. And I'm going to definitely mm. going to show you how. Mm. You want the man or the woman? Which one? Like, <laughs> Uncle, Le- Uncle Lou. Or the Uncle, Uncle Lou Le- or Uncle? Uncle Les. Uncle Les. Uncle Les, Uncle Les I- and Daddy Lou. I thought that he was trying to open her up to, like, the lust of blood. But I didn't see mm. it. I thought that yeah, no, not sexually. I think he intermingled like the sexuality of it with the hunt, you know? Mm, Yeah. Mm. Like it wasn't just the hunt. It wasn't just sexuality. It was both. And so he I think I think part of the irresponsibility on Lasat's part was she was novice. She was still a kid. So she didn't really understand. Exactly. All of those things. So it's like he kind of like hammered her right into that, you know. Yeah. And and when she did, it was like you know her mind was like blown, yeah. You know, yeah. which kind of which kind of segued her into like cutting all body parts later, you yeah. know. Yeah, that blood what, blood. Like yeah, it's, like okay, like a sociopath. Yeah, I'm trapped into this bo- this child's body, but I should be normally <laughs> progressing into these other things. So it's, I feel like he kind of forced her into that, and she wasn't ready for it. But like, she gets kind of intrigued on this particular kill. I think she right. was oh. headed toward that, though, y'all. Do y'all remember what it was like being a teenager? Wondering when yeah. you were a And this person being trapped in pretty... I think that the fact that remember if you have you got have, I've read I've read a book or two and I just remember them saying that it was what what it was um, forbidden to make one so young. Correct. You're as correct. Claudia. Because and I think it's because you trapped them in puberty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. You, but you know never get even them. though even though trapping them in puberty, I also think Lestat came from a different time where kid, like you're 14, but 14 is childbearing age. And so yeah. you would be a lot further yeah. along. So I think like his mindset is more, you should be exposed to all these things because when I was growing up, this is what I was exposed to. So I mm-hmm. think that was possibly his way of thinking. Like, mm-hmm. let me treat you like the adult that you are, even though with our movie. frame of reference, that yeah. is a child in a child's body. That's is good. she 14 or is she 16? Yeah. She's 14. 14. Okay. She's, 14. She's 14. In the book, she was five. Yeah. In the movie, I think, I don't know, she in was eight or book, nine or something. She was yeah, five she years was, old. Yeah, she was. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness, so much impropriety. <laughs> I would have so, been able to take it on screen if it was a bad damn five year old. I couldn't <laughs> see that. I could yeah. see a little munchkin jumping up and killing people. That's hey, it. Yeah. That's, I would yeah. look at kids differently for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Good judgment. <call. laughs> <laughs> so, so El yeah, kind of got us on to the next point. Um, in that moment when um, when Claudia was about to make her kill in the park, um, she she looked at these two lovers making out, and there was a thought that went on in her head, and we kind of found out what that thought was um, during that particular show. And so, basically, she realized that she would never grow old, right. um, and so that puts us on another path with the evolution of Claudia. And so, of course, um, she finds Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. 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 
So poor Claudia. Claudia and Charlie were doomed from the start. I think that um, it was sweet while we were watching it. It was really adorable. It was adorable, but you know, the whole time it it ended catastrophically because she 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 ate couldn't help. Yeah, she couldn't help herself. She she couldn't help (laughs) herself. Right up there. So good. And, and, oh, he, and I think Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> like I think that she I think that her her feelings became <laughs> like intertwined with her vampire lust. I think her burgeoning yeah. um womanhood became confused and conflicted with her vampire nature. And I think that she just Another reason why they probably say you shouldn't make a one so young a vampire because they can't differentiate the two. But couldn't so, she have gotten the dick first? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. She should, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get that first. I thought it she was She could that have. Time. She could have if she, she would have recognized that she, that's what she was doing. As soon as that was that Wait, so she she wasn't dry. What'd you say, Eric? <laughs> Wait, what? I said, as soon as that little thing perked. She was trying to let little nigga <laughs> drop. <laughs> I mean, no co Charlie. He didn't stand a chance, poor thing. He did not. <laughs> but that also sends her to, into a tailspin for the most mm-hmm. part. And, and what happens after that is really kind of, it really starts the progression and trauma. The, the trauma and volatile relationship that she starts to have with. Less, uh, with Lestat, who she blames for her condition, um, even though, I mean, she blames Louis too to an extent. Yeah. Even though mm-hmm. Louis is the one who brought her to Lestat to make her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, mm-hmm. it was just the way that Lestat handled the the situation. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. There yeah. was a clear her difference. Th- I'm sorry. He didn't invest in her the same way Louis did. No, oh, th- there was a. You th- like here it is. Between- Boom. Here you go. I'm gonna take right. you from A to 15. And I'm switching from alphabet to, to number. And Louis wanted to be much more, you know, softer and like understanding, you know, what what these emotions are. But Lestat was like, nah, none of that. And so that sends her into a tailspin, in my opinion. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts? It definitely does because it's like here is what it is. I'm not going to kind of ease you into anything. I need you to watch this body burn. Mm-hmm. He's dead. This is what you did. No, don't look you away. Killed him. You killed Right. Did. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. you this is what him. you did. Right. So, you, you know, exactly. Whereas <laughs> Louis is more soft, like, said. yeah, you ate him. Like, okay. You I, you I'm not going to make him a vampire. I can't. You bought him to be dead. You drained you know, him it dry. Was that, it was exactly. that moment he picked up the hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Okay. He gotta be something. He's a, a just, prick. He is a prick. This. He's awful. He is awful. And poor Claudia is just crying. Awful. Just crying the heart out. It's distraught. You know, he's grabbing it by the face like, no, don't look away. This is what you did. I need you to see your work. So it's like you you're dealing with those different parenting styles, right? And mm-hmm. which is something that's very common. Like, no, okay, here's the authoritative parenting parent versus the parent that's way more lax. You know, it's like, oh, let me just talk to you about it. No. Mm-hmm. I need you to mm-hmm. understand. Here's the severity of what you did. And I feel like Lestat makes Claudia the monster that she is. And the the mm-hmm. and not just monster, but she's clever. She's very, yeah. very clever, very more clever. so, yeah. more so than we is because Claudia is a dog. Like yeah. Claudia is like she has Lestat's brain and and primitive nature, you know. Whereas she has Louise, like she cares about Louise, and it seems like not really anybody else, honestly. Like she cares about his feelings and those things, but she's primitive in nature. Like no, I gotta kill whoever I gotta kill. And we're gonna get away from the fat, and that's the end. Right. And so, as a result, it's very of cut and dry. That, as a result of all of that, Claudia experiences trauma, mm-hmm. pain, 
Um, and we see at the very end of the episode how she deals with that trauma. Oh. Erica. Oh, that's good. Um, I don't. I passed. I, 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 no, I, no, 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 no. You, you know, at the end of the episode, it's like she has this whole soliloquy, right? She has this monologue. And she's kind of dipping into the sunlight, you know, and kind of burning herself like this self mutilation kind of oh, yeah. sort of thing going on. So he I just wanted to jog him right now. He really freaked the fuck out when she realized she was trapped in a pubescent body. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I had she did it. So, body. <laughs> so I equated that moment he, with. With, I don't know about y'all, but I had it in my I would flip the fuck out too. <laughs> so, so I, I get that moment. You, nigga. <laughs> if I gotta stay fourteen for the rest of my life, <laughs> well, these guys go down. Double, double A cups. <laughs> so, okay. so, so I equated that moment to when people life. cut themselves. Yeah. Um, I agree. Oh yeah. Wait, what did he say? Oh, the so, cutting. cutting. Yeah. Um, it, it was like a release of pain. It was like she needed to know that she was alive. She needed to know that she was somebody. That she like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that pain did. made her alive. Yes, that pain yeah. made her exist. I think this is the this is the first step too because then later on then she start to progress even to even more mutilations and all this other kind of stuff. That's well, later on. Yeah. Yeah. Next okay. episode. Next yeah. episode. She's mm -hmm. she's pretty dark. Like yeah, I look at it like the last the last scene of her burning her arm was really dark and shows that the death of Charlie took her from this naive, novice, innocent, oh everything's sunshine, rainbows and darkness and oh man, blood everywhere. You know, just this curiosity about everything that it meant to be a vampire to now looking at it like, okay, this is not so cool. I'm stuck in this body forever. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. This guy that I and like, I blame and, you. I wanted, and I blame you, I blame that you daddy. That. And I don't understand why I'm not gonna grow. I don't understand why this happened to me, and I want more blood, and everybody's gonna have to die. Was she saying uh, flat chested, no hair? Right. <laughs> he flat did say that, though. Huh? No, she said that about herself. Oh, she did. Yes, yes she, she did. did. Yes, she did. She did. Uh, so they go Louis, back to the. Louis reading the diary and realizing, okay, this is where I failed as a parent. Mm -hmm. Right. When Charlie oh, died, this is where I failed. So for me, it's the pursuit of blood with all a child's demanding, okay? So it's like a child. It doesn't matter if you got to kill someone or not. I'm hungry. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is, at the most primal level, this is what it is. And the, the, Right, it, exactly. That part. So she's trapped. That's it. That's I can't think any further than that. I'm trapped at that. This is the demanding. This is what I need to survive and to be okay. So, you know, whereas you got Louis that decides he's going to be a, a vampiretarian, you know. You know, versus, you know, Claudia like, nope, you know, I'm going to kill. I'm going to do what I got to do because that's just at my most primal level what I need. Mm -hmm. That's you know? right. She wants that two legged meat. I agree. Right. I ain't mad at it. I wouldn't be bullshitting either. Like, I'm like, with this, this is not a game at this point. With these tiny mm -hmm. boobs in his body, and I'm just going to be me Phil? Okay. I'm going to show you. <laughs> she said at one point, she was just like, who going to. She cursed. She said, "Who right. gonna have sex with me? Who gonna have? Is it is it you, Lestat? Right. Is it you, Louis? <laughs> yeah, Louis? Who gonna? Y'all got y'all got each other. Like I don't who, see y'all climbing that, each other, coughing at night. My Louis. Right. Is my Lestat. 
Let's that sound like more of a foot, more of a lump. <laughs> Look that. There we go. With a little stock quote right there. It, that was that. Him being a prick once again. <laughs> I like a more voluptuous woman. And he know this woman ain't got no curse. <laughs> <laughs> he knows she trapped him. She busts his body. Like, you wrong for that, bro. This is, a, I think this is also the, the part where she really starts to, her attitude towards Lestat starts to change a little bit more. Yeah. And it starts mm -hmm. to kind of bend yeah. a little bit. Yeah, especially yeah. after you make me okay. watch my lover burn in the incinerator and refuse to allow me to look away. Like, I'm looking mm -hmm. at you different now, Uncle Liz. You ain't Uncle Liz no more. You're not. I don't rock You're not. with you. You're not. We, and we gonna have a problem. <laughs> you gonna have a whole problem. This is you still trauma. Uncle Les, but what does Uncle Les mean now? Right. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Evil. In as much as it did yeah. before, as much as it did before that, like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. I think we have talked enough about episode four. Episode four is titled "The Ruthless Pursuit of Blood with All a Child's Demanding." Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share on all your social media platforms. It's been wonderful. Thank you all for watching. See you. <laughs>